All right, let's look at a couple more complex examples. So here's a function that I cannot even see its graph because it's probably so humongous. All right, so this is x to the one-fifth minus five quantity raised to the seventh power. So let's get right to it. Step one, switch your x's and y's. All right, so here I go. I switch x's and y's, and I, I, don't, I don't see a graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out, all right, and I can see after I zoom out for a while that, yes, these functions appear to be inverted. All right, um, meaning that the domain and the range have been completely inverted. Okay, so uh, order of operations, right? So I've got y to the one-fifth minus five, and I like to think of it as I invert items from the outside. I invert items that do not directly affect the y at first. So this is y to the one-fifth, then subtract five, and then raise all of that to the seventh, which means you need to first get rid of that seventh power. All right, so you do that by taking the seventh root. All right, so I'm gonna take the seventh root and it gives me an equivalent graph. Seventh root of X, all right? Now it's a little more simple. I've got Y to the one fifth minus five, which means I'm gonna add five to both sides. I'm, I'm solving for Y still, all right? So I do that and all that remains is Y to the one fifth. Now to invert a one fifth exponent, you could raise both sides to the fifth power that will essentially uh, cancel out the exponent or make the exponent one. So I'm gonna raise the entire um, left side right here to the fifth power, and I end up with y equals a seventh root of x plus five quantity to the fifth power. All right, and we'll do one last out of this world example. All right, and here we go. All right, so what if I have, uh, let's see, what if I have, let's go back home. Okay, and you can see that I've already got my inverse functions. All right, but what if I have y equals nine times, look at all these roots, nine times the fifth root of x plus three divided by eight. Once again, this gets repetitive, all right? Switch your x's and y's, boom, all right? And your graph will confirm that that is the inverse, all right? Another neat thing to see is that when inverse functions intersect, they always intersect on the line y equals x, which means that they intersect at identical x and y coordinates, uh, at identical x and y values. Okay, such as 1.6, 1.6, or negative two thirds, negative two thirds. Um, now, to solve for y, I'm going to multiply by eight. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract three. All right, and I progressively check that my equate my graphs are the same. All right, next I'm going to divide by nine. Okay. So far, so good. And last, I'm going to raise everything to the fifth power. So you see, to make more, to make, to go on to higher levels right here, all we're doing is we're adding more operations around a variable. But in reality, as long as you know the basics of inverting operations, such as adding when something is being subtracted, multiplying when something is being divided, squaring when something has been, has been uh, is taking the square root, etc. Um, really, it's all about inverting the steps in the correct order. All right. And if you ever worried that you inverted steps in an incorrect order, compare the graphs. Right. That's what Desmos is for. So you compare the graphs. And as long as they're reflected across uh, about the line Y equals X, which I have included as a dotted line, which you would have to include on your own if you have a blank graph. Uh, as long as they're uh, symmetrical across that line, then you have found inverse functions. All right. You can also test just to make sure with some coordinates. For example, here I see the coordinate looks like two, six or pretty, pretty close to two, six, right? Um, so I would expect this other function to have the point six, two, which, you know, looks pretty good, all right? Uh, that is a little more work on finding inverse functions. Best of luck to you.